Hey, so here's a video on getting started with Inbox Zero if you want to deploy it yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and clone it to my computer. Once the repo is cloned, we'll go into the README and we will follow the steps to set it up. So the requirements are you need Node.js um, version 18 or higher and we install everything with PMPM. So let's go do the PMPM install now. In the root, I do PMPM install. So that's now finished. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a Postgres database. So I'm going to go to the Docker Compose and I'm actually going to comment out the Redis over here because I'm going to use the Upstash version instead. Here you can see the Postgres data that we're going to have. And if I come back to the README, you'll see the instructions to set this up and you can see it's now running. And the credentials for the database are Postgres DB inbox zero, the password is password. And so I'm going to make sure we have this in our end file as well. So that's the next step that we should do. Here you can sort of see um, we need to copy this file, the end of example. So let's go and do that. Okay, so that's been copied. And just so you know what just happened, if we go to apps web, web, you'll see is the only one that's open. And here you'll see the end of example file. We basically went and just duplicated this here. And you can see a lot of this has already been set up. The Docker Compose has set this running at um, 8009 port. And here you can see that's all here and the password and so on. And we're going to have to fill in a lot of these other details, which we'll do in a second. But let's try and run the app first. Before that, what I need to do is run the migrations. So to do this, I will go CD into apps web and I will run Prisma Migrate Dev. And the last step will be to actually go and run the app. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you see that it failed. And the reason it failed is because we don't have all the environment variables set. So let's go and set a few of these right now. So let's generate a random secret for this. I'm copying my secret and I'm going to paste it in here. So that's the first thing we've done. And now the next parts are we need an open AI key. We need Upstash Redis and we need to set up the Google as well. So I'm going to quickly go and get those set up as well. So I've gone to API keys and I'm going to do create new secret. And over here, I'm creating a secret. You can decide the permissions you want. And we're going to copy and paste this in and put it into our dot env. So I have pasted this key in. I'm going to delete this afterwards because this is a real key. For Redis, what we're going to do is go to Upstash. I'm going to create a new database. You can choose between regional and global can have TL TLS enabled, just going to create one. I would enable TLS, by the way. Now I've gone to quick start and I'm going to copy in these details. So the URL and the token. So I've set the URL and the token here. And the last part we need to do is get the Google client details. So let's jump through that process as well. You'll see in the readme that there are links on how to get this. So I can go to this page on NextAuth to set it up. This is the page. I'm going to click configuration to set it up for me. I'm going to click create credentials and I'm going to click auth client ID. First, I must configure my consent screen. Here you can choose the user type. It can be internal to your organization, but because this is a personal email account right now, I can only choose to do um, the external option, but I, I can use it for test users this way, which I can add manually. I'm going to fill in these details. I've set in a domain, a developer email address, and so on. The scopes we need are here in the code and I'm going to copy and paste them in, which I've done. Now I'm going to do add to table and now I will update. So we have all the different scopes and save and continue. And you can add test users if you want. Um, you probably want to add your own email address at this point. I've added myself as a test user. Now we're going to go back and create credentials again. Application type will be web. You can give this a better name. And for the authorized JavaScript origins, we're going to paste in from here. We're going to use localhost 3000. So that would be this URI and we're going to create it. And now a screen has popped up with the final credentials that we need. So I'm going to take my client ID and I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to take my client secret and paste it in here and save. And now we should have everything set. Now let's try run the app again. You can also do turbo run dev and it looks like it's loaded up. 
which is great. So let's take a look and try and log in. And it looks like the app has loaded, which is great. Now let's try and log in. And you can see the login seems to be working. Now you'll get a screen saying this hasn't been verified because we've made our app external rather than internal. You um, have to first verify with Gmail, which is a process which can take a few months and be quite costly. Um, but if you're using it internally, you don't need to worry about any of this. So you would just click continue and log into the app. One thing I realized that we're missing is the tiny bird URI as well, which is missing and the app won't work well without it. So tiny bird token is something we have to set as well. Now when logging in, you can select all for permissions and click continue and you'll see we're logged in and the app is loading up, but the data on this screen won't load for me because we haven't set the tiny bird token yet. So let's go and do that. When signing into tiny bird, you'll choose a region and then create your workspace. You can give it the name you want and click create workspace. I've gone and done that already. Now on the tokens tab, you can go and create a new token or you can use an admin token. And now I've set the token in my data as well. Let's refresh the page and see if we can start loading data now. Next thing you'll see when trying to load the page is that you also need to enable Gmail API. So let's go and do that. You'll see here if I go to console.cloud.google.com um, and search for Gmail API, I can enable it. The API has now been enabled. And the next error you'll see is that we haven't set up Tinybird yet. So let's go and do that. The details for setting up Tinybird are going to be in the Tinybird readme file. So let's jump to that. And the quickest way to get started is to run it via Docker. I'm going to copy and paste this in. Going to open up a new terminal. I'm going to do CD packages and then Tinybird. The tiny bird analytics package isn't critical. And now we are going to run this Docker container and we're ready. It might take you a bit longer the first time. Now we need to do CD into mount data and now we can run commands via TB. So let's do TB push data sources and you'll see that we're missing a token. So let's go and set our token so that we can use these commands. So we'll do TB auth to do this. And now I've logged in. So let's try run this command again, TB push data sources. And it looks like this has all worked successfully. And if we go to data sources on Tinybird, you'll see that we have our email data source and we also have um, a materialized view, which is just a helper for us. The last step is to also push the pipes. So this pipes are SQL queries that get our data for us and then send it back to us. Now this might take a few seconds. I don't know why there's a delay here, but you can see eventually it starts processing every pipe and publishing it to Tinybird for us. Eventually this finished. Let's check that they exist. And you can see all these endpoints now exist, which is great, exactly what we want. And the final step is now to load the page again. Hopefully now we'll start getting data in. So at least the page loaded and you can see here a spinner which says load more. We need to make some improvements here because this isn't the best UX, but the data is loading and it's being stored in Tinybird. And if I refresh the Tinybird page again, and you can see we've received the data. So the app is now all set up and working. Feel free to also self-host this. You can put this on Vercel or anywhere else. There are additional steps you could take in the readme as well. If you want to get push notifications. So here are some comments about how you set that up with Google PubSub. You can use Ngrok as well if you want to run it locally. And we'd love for you to contribute. And I hope that makes it easier for you to get us there. There are quite a few steps. We'd like to make parts of this easier in the future. Thank you for watching and good luck managing your email.